Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Daring Player Squad channel. My name's Rashi. Yeah, I'm Joyce. And it's Monday, which is outside our usual stream days for Bad Boy Stubs. But uh, we are taking over for Ashy's day, as she is taking her time to... No, dur... What did I tell you about the durian, Joyce? <laughs> the durian button. <laughs> It needs to be pressed, and you have. No, you I'm need not to gonna put ten. I'm not gonna let ten thousand points be every time I eat a durian. We and have so much durian. Yeah, I don't want it. it. <laughs> you need to eat it. <laughs> Great, we started this with an argument. Uh, yeah, and you know what? I'm going go to, eat your durian, Rash. I'm not gonna eat my durian right now. I, mean, well, I will the eat my durian. The people have spoken. You, I, you have submitted valuable points. Yeah, see, it's way too good of a value for what they're getting. That's why I'm saying it has to be at least. At least triple, like six digits, but no. Okay, let's meet halfway. Let's say seventy-five thousand. How about that? But because you purchased it while it's discounted, you shall receive it uh, a discounted. Uh, you you shall receive it at discount. How about that? Oh, thanks. Eleven, eleven was just like okay. Here's a dollar, <laughs> hundred bits to, 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 to levy the blow. You know, to, to oh, soften the blow. God. You uh, know, if you if you oppose this so much, you could be the one going in here and changing the point. It was right the first time. You changed it after the fact. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's okay. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so you will get your durian uh, thing. Uh, you will get a durian uh, point, I guess, at the discounted rate. I will. I will. I will. I will uh, honor that. Um, but I won't do it right now because it's all the way literally in the kitchen. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, we're taking the Monday shift just because uh, Ashley did, is uh, busy with work, uh, not work, but busy with uh, upcoming convention stuff. Uh, How about 50,000? No, 75,000. <laughs> You're such a baby. It's just a baby. It's just a baby. That's what you sound like. <laughs> what if I take the food you hate the most and I made you swallow that every time someone decided to throw a hundred bits at you? Would that be okay? Uh, excuse me, a hundred bits is nothing. Yeah. Oh, 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 how dare you? How dare you? We were at we were at ten thousand points. Okay. Joyce is just like that's not <laughs> fair I'm because I'm, I'm okay. just better than everybody. I'm a gay. And I don't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Someone Thank wants you. to see, that, see the you durian, eat that durian. Yeah, no, I will eat the I will eat a durian uh, treat that I have. Um, again, they're all the way in the kitchen, so I won't do it now. If you if anybody does purchases more durian stuff, uh, feel free to go ahead and just like pop that in there, and I'll like uh, depending on how many requests happen is how much I'm how much durian I will eat. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, uh, we're here Mondays. Uh, it is also uh, a long ho long holiday for us as well, so the Monday shift wasn't too hard to take over uh, at this time. It's like uh, 3 p.m., right? Uh, 3.20 p.m. here over in, in the, the West Coast. Uh, and so uh, here in BC, we have BC Day. Uh, so uh, we, we went ahead and took the took the day to go ahead and shift from our Sunday slot, slot to the Monday slot uh, because Sunday I would got, we got busy with a whole bunch of stuff and it just was uh, unattended. Uh, was it? untenable to do both and survive so we were just like okay we can just push this to a monday but yes welcome back uh we're five people who play video games today is bad voice dubs uh, ace attorney i finally did a bc thing and i saw the barge yeah <laughs> yeah the infamous barge that's apparently slowly being dismantled um but yeah here we are uh we are going into this court case to save um our good friend trucy right uh who has been uh who has been charged with Moida. Moida. Uh, they Magical in, Moida. They had to import they imported an <laughs> imported a new prosecutor for this specific uh for this. Um that's not true. Uh the the, the prosecutor has been um the prosecutor uh is actually just happening to be visiting and is taking on the case. So yeah. Yeah, how well things hey while well, things got busy, good friend. <laughs> uh but yeah, so it was just um What's up? My name? Oh, good. My good, our good friend. Well, they don't know their sisters, their, their siblings, do they? I don't think they know. They don't know yet. So, I don't think as they far know. as they're concerned, uh, we're good friends. <laughs> uh, yeah. So here we go. Uh, we're going into this court case. Uh, half. I'm, I'm now. I'm concerned. I don't know what's what. <laughs> what Brendan's going on about? Explain, Brendan. We're gonna go into this case. Uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm Apollo Justice, and I'm fine. Is Apollo okay? He's been muttering to himself all morning. He's been like that since yesterday. I guess the pressure of today's trial is kind of getting to him. Oh, poor Polly. He's really tearing himself up all over this. 
Get it together, Apollo! Yikes! Athena, when did you get here? Try to relax a little bit, will you? You're getting yourself way too worked up! Yeah, but I'm alright. I'm fine! Just say that one more time and I'll believe you. You know, I did a little digging on this Nayuta Sadmari guy. He's apparently not your run-of-the-mill prosecutor. Oh yeah? What did you find out? Well, they say he wields an incredible power. To accurately read a trial's karma and its ultimate fate. Okay, cool. <laughs> Oh, they don't know about Phoenix and the last... Uh, right, right, okay. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's verified. You're just making a joke. <laughs> I mean, yes. Uh, yeah, obviously, they're, we know that they're they're, ha they're, they're full... We school. know that they're... We know that. <laughs> uh, what is that supposed to mean? I don't have all the details, but apparently... He can foresee how the arguments will go and even lead his opposition. So the defense basically ends up going in whatever direction he has in his head. Man, this guy's. Uh, this is gonna be a. Uh, this isn't gonna be a cakewalk if that's true. Emma did say she talked to him for us, though. Here's hoping that went well. In any case, it sounds like he's gonna keep us on our toes. Uh, that's why I know you're ready. Why I know I can leave Trucy in the office to you. I believe in you, Apollo. I guess that should have deserved a reverb, that's, eh? That's fine. Oh, well. Mr. Wright is putting a lot of faith in me. I can't let him down now. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine! There he goes again. It's almost like he's chanting a prayer. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm Apollo Justice and I am fine! I'm a fine, hot piece of prosecu uh, defense attorney booty. <laughs> Juniper tells me this all the time. <laughs> if you say so, Apollo. Although, Juni kind of worships the, yeah. <laughs> the ground you walk on. This is pre-Juniper, pre isn't it? No, this is post-Juniper. Post uh, the trial will start momentarily. Is the defense ready? Uh, yes, we're fine! <laughs> Yikes! Trucy's fate and the fate of the agency rests on this trial. This is it, Justice. If ever there was a time to shine, it's now. Do it. Weak. Oh, it's weird. We switch between the two, uh, the two uh, court courtrooms. Neat. Ah, uh, what? We're, we're we're both we're in two different courtrooms. What we were we would do the crying courtroom, and then we do the actual uh, San Fran Tokyo courtroom. Well, yeah, because yeah. you're in San Fran Tokyo. Court is now in session for the trial of Trucy Rat. Japanifornia. Japanifornia, yeah. yeah. The defense is ready, Your Honor. All right, Joyce. Oh, we never actually discussed. <laughs> yeah, who who should voice this one? Is gonna be who Joyce. Who should be in Hayuta? Joyce should be prosecutor. Joyce, jo uh, pros uh, prosciutto Joyce. Uh, prosciutto Joyce. Because <laughs> Joyce loves prosciutto. Literally, will eat it at office. Oh my god! <gasps> I have. You have prosciutto. You want to grab your prosciutto? I don't know if I go into the kitchen. Then I'm bringing. I'm bringing your durian snacks. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll cut it with some prosciutto. <laughs> <laughs> If you so desperately want it, you can go grab it right now while everybody in the chat can decide whether or not <sighs> Joyce gets to play uh, Nahuta, the uh, uh, the gender, ginger ambiguous uh, prosecutor. Yeah. Mmm, <laughs> yeah. yes, meaty. Mm. Which one do you want? You have a choice. The rice cake, the, yeah, the rice cake one. That one's actually pretty decent. But yeah, Joyce was wondering, we were all wondering if we wanted to do different, uh, different voices for the prosecutor. Uh, mostly because uh, I do a lot of the voices <laughs> by myself, which is kind of the reason why this is my stream, uh, my native stream. Uh, but what else is there? Um, uh, yeah, so uh, I think in this instance, Joyce is going to have almost like, if she plays uh, Nayuda, she'll have four, three different characters to have to voice out. Oh. This one's not that bad. You said this was supposed to be refrigerated? I thought, but... Maybe just better chilled. Perhaps. 
You weren't. You're not gonna. Oh, you brought a knife. Thank God. I, I don't know. You're just gonna eat it. Literally eat a stick of prosciutto. <laughs> from the of tires. Yes, I'm gonna put that meat in my mouth. All right, Joyce. <laughs> okay. I mean, we can always decide halfway through. To yeah. Did you want to do? No, you did for them for now. Sure. 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 Until I regret things. Okay. And the prosecution. Uh, uh, <laughs> Prosecutor Sadamani. A thousand pardons. It was rude of me to keep you waiting. I was praying for the victim. No! Oh, praying! Yes, yes, I see. You're a Quranist monk, correct, Prosecutor? Yes, that is correct. But I, uh, I am but a lowly monk from the kingdom of Quran. I beg in advance for the forgiveness and kind patience of everyone here in this court. I am unfamiliar with the proceeding of this country and may make many blunders. Why? <laughs> Why would you let that? Okay, whatever. <laughs> huh. He seems like such a gentle mannered soul, doesn't he? I wonder if Emma had a chance to talk with him about Trucy. Now then, Prosecutor Sadamati, your opening statements, if you would. Certainly. In the name of the Holy Mother, I vow to guide the victim's soul to a land of eternal peace, known as the <laughs> Twilight Realm. Bad, Yugi boy. I'm gonna banish you to the Twilight Realm. Now. Yeah, white power. <laughs> <laughs> let the last rites Sorry. of the victim begin. He's just, he's doing this, the, the prayer, the prayer sign, right? Like you would like, a, you see like a, uh, not a monk, but um, yeah. like a monk statue, like, like this or something. But every time I think of this, I keep thinking like, oh, white power. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, it seems to be. It's, that's, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. No, <laughs> he's going like that, right? Just the, yeah. But uh, that really, that's kind of suited it for what's his face, the, uh, Mr. Not Quite yeah, Socrates. Mr. Mr. Fanban Socrates. <laughs> now, Yudas Sadamati, he's really been making a name for himself, apparently, but that nickname, Last Rites Prosecutor, I wonder how that will come into play today. Seriously, on a scroll. The incident took place in the middle of a spectacular magic show. The accused performed a magic trick in which she thrust a sword into a coffin. I don't like the way you said thrust. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, 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 a coffin from which the body of the victim then spilled out, dead from a fatal stabbing. The victim's name was Manov Mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise known as the Great Mysterious. His blood was found on the sword that was used during the magic trick. We finally get the fucking autopsy report. God, <laughs> shouldn't we have known this like earlier? Yeah, shouldn't we have gotten all all this evidence into one place first so that we can research our, our arguments? No, we'll just do it on the spot and give you three days to figure it out. So his death was just an unfortunate accident. It is only natural for one to assume as such your honor. However, it was no mere accident, but rather a homicide. The prosecution's position is thus, that this was a murder made to look like an accident. I see. And you believe this crime was committed by the defendant? After a thorough consideration of all possible scenarios, I, unfortunately, had no other choice but to conclude as much. So that's how it's gonna be, huh? I guess Emma couldn't convince him after all. Very well. And now, let us hear from the defense. Naturally, we maintain that the defendant is innocent, Your Honor. If the defense wouldn't mind. Could you please explain your reasoning? My reasoning? Uh, well... I would have to say that my main reason is because I believe in the defendant. <laughs> I see. So you find it difficult to come up with anything more concrete than that, do you? Well, yeah. There's I mean, no. That she's my she's my sister. So yeah, <laughs> I you know I can't find fault in my sister. No. <laughs> what a fine demonstration of the fact that you are indeed a lawyer of putrid mind. Cool. P putrid mind. 
Listen, I don't know how that stuff got into my laptop, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it was behind, like, the Naruto folder. <laughs> Prosecutor Sadamari. Excuse me, but I don't... Huh, oh, what did he say? He said in foreigner. He said it in foreigner. He said Whoa, in he foreigner. just fucking jitsu wow. me, bro. Get out of the Sonoka. Oh, there we go. He straight up just <laughs> jitsu me. He just fucking ninjitsu me, bro. That's why he found my nut in a folder. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, prosecutor, what were you just chanting? A sutra of the Holy Mother that guides those of ch tainted soul towards enlightenment. Kind of reminds me of May's, uh, Virginian. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, uh, uh donkey. <laughs> donkey Kamehameha. <laughs> Caesar's grass. <laughs> it is a Quranistic inca incantation to awaken the foolish from their fruitless slumber. Fitting for a lawyer who indulges in such fancy as the innocence of the accused. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I, I see. So basically, I'm asking for the defense to the defense to quote get real end quote. <laughs> Allow me these few words, defense. It is my duty as a monk to punish sinners and to guide victim souls to the twilight realm. Yeah, you're gonna punish me? Is that it? <laughs> you know, you're gonna punish me, huh? <laughs> oh, you've been a bad I'm boy, a bad Apollo. Boy? Is that what you want? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, this is getting a little bit weird. I will serve the justice that is in your name. <laughs> you serve me some of my, some my justice, my justice juice? That... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on here now. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen the beginnings of many relationships in my courtroom, but... <laughs> hmm. <laughs> should, should you show repentance and admit to the accused guilt now, no harm will come to your way. But should you interfere with my sacred last rites of the victim? <laughs> then I shall cast you down into the pit of hell, along with Trucy Wright. No, wait just one minute here. Putrid, pit of hell. Is that any way to address someone in a court of law? Hmm, Prosecutor Sadamari, that may be the way you conduct trials in Quran, but I would appreciate if you would refrain from such charged language here. Your Honor, that was but a Quranist sermon for those who have strayed from the path. Harsh words are often necessary to admonish contemptible deviants who cannot see reason. Oh, I see. I didn't realize, uh... I guess they really do hate defense attorneys in crime, huh? Even still, that was way, way over the top as, for, as far as verbal abuse goes. And the trial's only just begun. Oh, you're in for it now, Paulo. Am I really? <laughs> you're like, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine! <laughs> Huh, well, defense, I suppose the way of, pro of a prosecutor does, uh, mm. Well, defense, I suppose, uh, the way a prosecutor does things varies by country. Why don't we look at this as cross-cultural cross exchange and try to be open-minded about it? Thanks. Well, thanks, thanks, Judge. Dude. Thanks for nothing. What? Bailiff, please bring in the first witness. Is it Miss Rabbitsy? Oh, oh, no! She's got the snack Oh, no! The snack Uh-oh, I thought she'd said goodbye to the snack -hoos. Poor girl. She's eating like a rabbit. Munch, 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 munch. Detec Detective Sky, the courtroom is no such pla no place for gorging yourself. What's wrong with having a little snack? Girls gotta eat, right? She, uh, seems a little stressed out. Detective Sky, your testimony, please. Y yeah, about that. I just want to state for the record that I believe Trucy is Trucy Wright is innocent. Um, sorry. Detective Sky, this path you seek to follow is misguided. Give the wrongdoer false giving the wrongdoer false hope will only deepen her despair in the end. But I let it go and move on. Acts which go against your duty will earn you divine punishment from the Holy Mother. Oh no, she's gonna get a salary cut. 
Oh my god, my god, my god, my god, my god, my Oh, she's oh, sad chewy, chewy. chewy, sad chew noises. <laughs> Fine. I don't know about the divine part, but I get the punish bit loud and clear. I guess Emma got to sign tons of paperwork or something for sticking up for Trucy. She and Prosecutor Sadamani don't seem to get along very well, do they? Shall we continue? The prosecution contends that the accused had a clear motive. The evidence, if you would, Detective Sky. All right. Please take a look at this poster. It's a Troop Grammary poster posted uh, from 13 years ago. Whoa, Man of Mystery got... <laughs> he got fucking canceled. He got canceled, bro. <laughs> that cancel culture. Yeah. Huh. Is it just me, or is this a little different from the one that Miss Wright, uh, is it just me, or is this one a little different from the one Miss Wright's dressing room? This is a revised version of that poster. This one says, cancelled under Mr. Reyes. That's right. <clears throat> Mr. Reyes left the troop after the first version of the poster was printed. Oh, that's how they explain the whole, like, there was no... He wasn't in the other posters after that, yeah. Take a look at Mr. Reyes' right forearm, near his elbow. See the big scar there? He apparently got that when he made a mistake while practicing a magic trick. Ouch! That's quite a scar. Because of the accident, Magnifi Grammary concluded Mr. Reyes was too unskilled. Just before the show was to open, Magnifi announced Mr. Reyes wouldn't be appearing. But in defiance of Magnifi's de decision, Mr. Reyes tried to go on stage anyway. This, in turn, caused Magnifi to oust Mr. Reyes from the troop on the spot. He kicked Mr. Reyes out? That seems rather extreme. Did he really have to go that far? The man is, <laughs> is controlled. Yeah, probably. When it comes to magic, Troop Grammary was so, so passionate. Or should I say extreme about it that it caused pro uh, problems for them from time to time. Hmm, yes, they even caused this court a mountain of trouble with the extreme antics. And now, the troop's successor has committed a murder. It seems the troop's rare talent was inherited by the right person after all. Hey, <laughs> right person. A putrid talent for criminality. Man, why is that your favorite word? Even everybody's like, come on, bro, fucking ease up a little bit, dude. You sound rather extreme yourself, prosecutor. Criminals with impure souls do not deserve sympathy, your honor. <laughs> As I was saying, after his expulsion, Mr. Reyes apparently went to, on to hold a grudge against the troop. He would tell those close to him, I will get my revenge on Troop Grammary someday. Revenge, hmm? That certainly sounds antagonistic. The poster was updated. And then, his chances for revenge finally came. If you would be so kind, Detective Sky. I guess I don't have a choice, do I? The victim planned to get his revenge on Troop Grammary during Trucy's magic show. Mr. Rios was going to first steal the Grammary notebook from the defendant. He then intended to reveal the secrets behind their magic tricks during the show. That was the victim's plan for revenge. And when he did, in fact, steal a notebook, the defendant murdered him before he had a chance to reveal the secrets. Dum dum dum! Looks like we got a jealous gelatin over here. By the time the accused has discovered the notebook's theft, it was too late. Her only option was to kill Mysterious and make it look like an accident. Objection! Uh, that's nothing but conjecture. Objection. The victim's assistant, Bonnie Defam, uh, gave the police a statement. Defame, right? Defame. Defame. She testified that just before the start of the show, Mr. Rios said, I'm going to reveal all of Troop Grammar's secrets on stage today. W what? Huh. Well... That isn't exactly a great starting point for a rebuttal, is it? You're telling me. Allow me to give you one piece of advice, defense. Oh, and what's that? Quit while you're ahead. 
Oh, butterfly. Butterfly in the sky. I let can... it go. Let it go. No. <laughs> Excuse me, that's copyright. We can't hear it here. <laughs> you want to get sued by Disney? <laughs> Helping a sinner will only sully your own soul. And I am immune to Disney. <laughs> One possessed of a unclean soul will burn in the flames of hell. And then be ever burdened with that sin in their next life. But I don't believe in that sort of thing. I'm a good Catholic boy. I'm just gonna repent on my deathbed and it'll be all and I'm some squeaky clean. On. <laughs> Last minute repentance and then it's smooth sailing to heaven. <laughs> Besides, I have no intention of giving up. Oh, Holy Mother, grant me the strength to deal with his putrid lawyer. Give you some putrid lawyering up your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Actions have consequences, and yours will surely earn you the honor of being a mere stink bug at best in your next life. A stink bug? Now then, Mr. Stink I mean, Mr. Justice, your cross examination, please. <laughs> Mr. Stink bug. <laughs> cross examination. Beep, 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 beep. Um, press on the last statement. So the last statement says the defendant murdered him before he had a chance to reveal the mm -hmm. secrets. I'm sorry, but what exactly is the basis for claiming it was murder? Beats me. It's true. What? The basis is beats me? You'll have to ask Prosecutor Sadmari over there because he hasn't told me his reasoning either. Oh, stack of munchies. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Detective Sky. Your feeding of information to the defense has not gone unnoticed in my eyes. <coughs> the bad karma of acts which go against your duty will impinge upon your next life. But even before that, it may impinge upon your job in the form of a transfer. Wow, okay. <coughs> Please don't get me kicked out of the forensics unit! Anything but that! Oh, poor, poor Emma. She's really risking everything for us. Well, Prosecutor Sadamati, what are your grounds for claiming homicide? It was the luminous... What? Oh. Luminous tape. It was the luminous tape in the understage passage. I realized that it had been moved. Moved so that Mr. Rios would climb up the downstage... Climb up into the downstage coffin by mistake. Uh, what? Mysterious, who was waiting in the understage passage. Oh, mysterious. Huh? Mr. Reyes. Mysterious. Oh. Yeah, that's the joke. Oh. That's the joke. Jo Joyce slipped up on her, her, slipped up the pronunciation of Mr. Reyes. But if you say it really fast, Mysterious. Mis mysterious. Mysterious. Mis mysterious, yeah. It's, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's the joke. <laughs> mm. We've cracked the case, everybody. Good eye. <laughs> Just, yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> was supposed to have used the upstage ladder shown here on the left. He was to climb into the coffin that had been set up in the backstage area after being turned into a stuffed dragon during Act 1. Now, a mysterious was supposed to come back to life and emerge from that coffin. But the luminous tape had been moved to mark the downstage ladder. So the victim climbed up into the coffin on the stage itself by mistake. The very same coffin the accused thrust her sword into. And you have proof that it was my client who moved the tape? But of course. Detective Sky? Huh? Oh, uh, that's right. I, I identify the defendant's fingerprints on the luminous tape. You what? He actually had proof? I'm sorry, Apollo. Well, defense, are you finally ready to let it all go and move on? Uh, absolutely not. Detective, please add the information about the prints on the tape of your te uh, please add the information about the prints on the tape if to your testimony. 
Uh, and then yeah. present the fingerprint. Yeah, results. she couldn't have done it. I don't think. I don't. She had gloves on, didn't she? Uh, a set of unknown fingerprints were found on the top. Is that the one? Uh, it says prevent fingerprinting results. Yeah. Yeah. You can press A just to double check, but yeah. So the print of the top of the yeah, yeah. Uh, print of the top of the panel one known. Trucy wore gloves during the show, so none of the fingerprints were found. And Mr. Reyes, Mr. Mr. Reyes, Mysterious's palm prints were on reverse. Uh, yeah. So, how could they be Trucy's if she was wearing gloves the whole time? Exactly. I'm sorry, Detective Sky, but there's a flaw in your testimony. Oh, really? The prosecution is claiming that Miss Wright moved the understage tape during the show in order to guide the victim into the coffin downstage. But it doesn't make sense that she would leave prints on the tape at the time. So do you guys know anything about P.F. Chang's? We got one in Edmonton. I, I have, what is that? I've only heard of them, like a Chinese restaurant, uh, their pr prolific Chinese uh, chain restaurant. Oh, I did um, not know. In America. But I've never had them in real Z's. So I couldn't tell you much about it. Although, what was it? The Dim, what was it called? The place that we went to last, last at Kirkon a while back? The Dim, uh... Din Tai Fong? Din Tai Fong, that's really fun. That's really good. Uh, it, it doesn't. Please consider the fingerprinting results of the main coffin, which shows that not one of my client's fingerprints were found on or in it. Well, that's true. We didn't find any of her prints on that coffin. Hmm. Hmm. So the name. I think you've realized that the. I think you've realized what the flaw in your testimony is. Claiming Miss Wright left prints on the tape during the show is inconsistent with the facts. Because she was wearing gloves during the show. No. Oh. <laughs> she must have left the prints sometime before the show started. In other words, her prints do not prove that she moved the tape to mislead the victim. The prosecution's investigation was insufficient. Oh, my. But on a personal level, I am very happy to hear that. She. <laughs> well, defense. Well, Prosecutor Sadamari, the defense's argument is true. Then you have no evidence the defendant moved the tape to deceive the victim. I see. Apparently, the defense is more intelligent than I had thought. More than a think stink buck, at any rate. Come on, you can bump me up a little. Uh, you can bump me up to at least a stag beetle now, can't you? I see you are still an insect underfoot. Would that uh, really yeah, be any better? Oh yeah, but the stag beetle is so cool. Okay. <laughs> There's an entire, an entire mass rider theme again for him. Like, and I, I look <laughs> fucking, fucking cool. <laughs> okay. <sighs> So why don't you shut up your face? <laughs> of course, way better. My stag be beetles are cool with those huge mandibles of theirs. Satura. Satura. If the defense wishes to be promoted to a stag beetle, then answer me this question. All right, shoot. Even with no evidence that the accused vic uh, moved the tape to misguide the victim. The victim still climbed the ladder using the tape as a guide. And entered the coffin on the stage. The accused then thrust her sword into said coffin with the victim in it. So what you're saying is the fact remains that the victim was stabbed to death, correct? Precisely. However, this does drastically change one aspect of this case. If the accused did not lead the victim into the coffin on purpose, then it means the victim's death could have been accidental. If it was indeed an accident, the defense can argue it was a involuntary manslaughter. I see. If it was involuntary manslaughter, they could plead extenuating circumstances, and the severity of the crime could be mitigated. Defense, if you believe the accused did not murder the victim, then do you argue that it was an accident? This is it, the all-important question. The defense argues that Mr. Reyes' death was a murder. Because uh, it was. Because mm -hmm. uh, he was dead before he... Before got, he got in the into, into box. the coffin, yeah. And he wasn't even supposed to be there in the first place, so what the hell? Like, So someone must have navigated him there, right? Mm -hmm. It's not an accident. Someone 
put him there. Right? Shoved him into a box. <laughs> and then had him killed, yeah. Or had him killed and shoved him in the box. Or, yeah. The defense maintains that the defendant is entirely innocent. We believe that it wasn't an accident, but a murder. And what more, we believe it was committed by a third party. A, a third party? As in the true culprit is someone else? Holy shit, this is so cool. I wonder if we're gonna see our panties again. <laughs> I mean, they were pretty magical. Yeah. <laughs> that is quite a brazen claim to make, and one wholly without grounds. What are you talking about, man? Your voice is as loud as your suit, and your mind echoes just as loudly in emptiness. Head empty, no thoughts. <laughs> I can see it now. <laughs> it's a slow eye cross. The... <laughs> oh, Surely. Uh, it's, it's... Hmm? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Surely you are but a loud red pepper in your previous life. I've been demoted to a vegetable? Wow. I didn't know a person could be reincarnated as a non-sentient plant. In any case, I do have grounds to make this claim. Let us hear this reasoning of yours then. <laughs> My reasoning is trust me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. Trust me, bro. All right, but before I give it, there is one question that needs to be addressed. If the victim was killed by some third party, then the sword the defendant thrust into the coffin wasn't the cause of death. If that's the case, then how did we wind up with a dead body inside the coffin? A very good question. Now let's hear your op up onion, Mr. Justice. <laughs> how did the victim's body wind up inside the coffin? He was uh, killed in her stage. Mm -hmm. oh, it right. was magic! It was Mika! It was magically Mika's! Mika's ah! <laughs> Mika's like dress. <laughs> what if the victim was killed under the stage before being put in the coffin? In other words, what if the victim was already dead in the coffin from the get-go? Oh, I see. In that case, the defendant's sword wouldn't have been the cause of death. How do you respond, Prosecutor Saramari? That is the third time. The third time of what? Yeah. That f really? We're back to throwing shit again? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> what the heck is this? Are there, like, Vulcan mind meld here? <laughs> His head explodes. What do you think you're doing? Even the merciful Holy Mother loses patience if she is struck three times. Since you never learn, you needed to be punished. Why don't you let me worry about what I need and don't need? Oh, fuck you, bitch. I'll cut you. <laughs> <laughs> it is what you deserve for interfering with my sacred last rites for the victim. You are a brainless lawyer ch chasing phantoms. You know nothing. Let this humble servant of the Holy Mother give you an edifying sermon. A sermon? Now? There is a set passage in the sacred scriptures of Koreanism. A cornered frog will swallow even a snake. Uh-huh? A cornered lawyer has unexpectedly struck back hard against the prosecution. Did I get that right? No, for I am not done with my sermon. And yet, the frog still dies, its belly bitten and torn from within. Just great. And in this case, you are that frog, Defense. Uh, what's exactly your point anyway? Oh, he looks like Phoenix like that. That's adorable. Yeah. Uh, let us assume for a moment that the victim was killed under the stage. Who, then, had the opportunity to do so during the show? Well, let's see. Uh, the people in the show were... Bonnie DeFame, the victim, Mr. Rius, and Trucy Wright. Bonnie DeFame was on stage throughout the entire show, as easily confirmed by the footage from the show. Which leaves us with only one suspect, Trucy Wright. Agonic! <laughs> That's a different. Uh, Agonic! <laughs> now, do you see? <laughs> the accused killed Mysterious as he waited on standby in the understage passage and then placed his dead body in the coffin above. 
thus making the murder look like an accident. No! <laughs> Butterfly in the sky. <laughs> oh, great and merciful Holy Mother. Thus, another putrid mind has been guided towards enlightenment. I don't like crime prosecutors. <laughs> He's a Ugh. character. I can't believe I swallowed this trick question whole. Did he just say swallow this dick question whole? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, but I have to raise an objection here. Athena, what are you? There's something I want to point out, Apollo. And who might you be? You strike me as a mere child in countenance. I may be young, but I have an attorney's badge just the same. And you would contribute to this discussion in that capacity? I most certainly would! You just argued that de the defendant killed the un victim under the stage. But let me remind you that Ms. Wright is a girl. Clearly. Surely you wouldn't, didn't raise an objection simply to point out such an obvious fact. Your Honor, please send this little child's guardian to come take her home. <laughs> Joke's on you, I'm an orphan. <laughs> uh, I said guardian, not parents. Okay. Hold it. But I'm not done with my sermon! You don't need to talk like Prosecutor Sadamata, you know. Shut up. <laughs> Listen, if the victim was killed in the understage passage, then his body would have, would then have to be hauled up to the stage, right? However, Miss Wright is a young girl and a pretty petite one at that. She couldn't possibly have hefted that large body up and put it into the coffin. That's true. It does seem like it would be a rather difficult task for the defendant. Or maybe I'm just a sexist pig who- I don't give a- I don't, I don't fucking know. <laughs> don't cancel me, please. <laughs> don't cancel me. I don't think even I could. What do you think of that, prosecutor? Who's the child now? Countdown to Clessy. Oh yeah, it's true. <laughs> this is the classiest of games. In my religion, the priestesses of Quranism are revered as the pillars of our beliefs. So I naturally hold nothing but deep respect for women. I also think highly of the female perspective. <laughs> it's his excuse is that I have a, I have female friends, therefore I can't be I can't be sexist. <laughs> sure as hell, that's like a very it. problematic, wow. very problematic episode, folks. Says the man who called this fair maiden a little child. Who's a fair maiden? <laughs> you shut your whore mouth, Apollo! I didn't say anything! That was in my head! You can't read my mind! <laughs> I can read your- I can read your tone! <laughs> <laughs> I agree that your point is worth discussing, Defense. How, indeed, was the dead body raised up into the coffin? By the accused, Trucy Wright, that is. You're committed to pointing that finger at her no matter what, huh? Then you explain how that even that's even possible. Yeah, that's, that's a you fucking problem, buddy. <laughs> yeah. That's a you problem. But of course. Oh, with the, the, the lift. Hmm? With the yeah. lift. There was a way for even a small creature like her to raise the victim's body up. Huh? Wait! You really can explain it? I foresaw that our arguments would come to this, so I have prepared a witness. Well, well, I admire your readiness, prosecutor. It is really not that difficult when one can read the ultimate outcome of any trial. He couldn't have really predicted that things would turn out like this, could he? It's pretty hard to believe. Hey, excuse me, but may I step down now? Hmm. Yes, I suppose you may. One moment, Detective Sky. <laughs> I'm sorry for, you know, the way I handled all of this. You did a fine job, detective. Your testimony was invaluable. It was? Yes, you served well as a detective and did not allow your personal feelings to interfere. You overcame the conflict, conflicted emotions you felt and performed your duty admirably. 
You will be rewarded for your fine work. Okay. Uh, thank you. I hope we can work together again in the future. Emma seems bewildered by the unexpected praise. I guess he is a pretty nice person, like they say, as long as you're not up against him. Now then, let us call our next witness. Ooh. <laughs> oh, it's uh, the bunny girl. Too bad she's a fucking guy. <laughs> yeah. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the court. It's very nice to meet all of you. I am a Lego morphing illusionist from the land of fairy tales. Bonnie to fame. I can't wait to do some magic tricks for all of you. Please, witness. There is a time and a place for all things, including magic. Oh, but... But it would be okay if I just do a little magic, right? Come on! Please! Please! Look! Everyone's waiting! Now's my chance to shine! Pion! <laughs> pion, pion, pion! God. <laughs> wow, just shut her down immediately. Yeah. That is your second time. My second time doing what? There will be no further warnings. You should know that from our predatory... Predatory Pre sorry, meetings? Predator <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whoa! Whoa. Predatory Whoa. meetings, correct? Whoa. Wow! Whoa. Wow! Whoa. Excuse Whoa. problematic stream wow. over. Okay. <laughs> Preparatory. Oh, man. Oh, dear. Is no one exempt from his holiness? Ro oh, <laughs> Is no one exempt from his holiness's rosary? Of oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> we got him. Guilty. Guilty. We got her. <laughs> uh, oh, good God! Hello, wayward. Welcome in. What a time to be alive. Yeah, you just missed the predatory meeting they had. <laughs> <laughs> May we have your testimony, witness? Once you recovered from your disappointment. Well, as a huge fan of Trucy's. I don't really want to testify against her, but I guess I have to, don't I? You don't. Technically, if someone asks you to testify, you don't actually you don't have, have to. You don't have to. Unless it's, unless you literally saw it. Like, you, they can, can they, someone subpoena remind me, you? can they subpoena somebody? Like, can, can they force someone to testify through a subpoena? I have no idea. Or is that more of like a, like a, like a, like a business situation? I feel like you can't. There's like literally nothing you can do to make someone open up their mouth. Yeah. You can. It's called it's a subpoena, isn't it? So you have to come and you have to say what you saw. Yeah. I uh, guess. Um, that's a huge fan of Trucy's, huh? I hate her. I loathe her. Did that not? There you go. I hate her, I loathe her, I can't stand that Trizzy right! Just because she's a little good at magic, she thinks she's all that! So this is exactly that, what that sniveling rat deserves! Yeah, only the, only, the, only the accused can refuse to testify as it is their... I think in America, Second Amendment, right? Mm. You, can't, you can't be forced to self-incriminate yourself, essentially. <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah. Unless you be held in contempt of court. Okay, I see. Uh, sure, you're a real fan, all right. Of destroying Trucy, you mean? This is Japanifornia. Who, who Japan, yeah, yeah, exactly. I really can't believe that Trucy killed Mysterious. I guess it's possible for a small girl to lift a dead body up if she uses the stage lift. Is it possible? Could Trucy really have? If Trucy did use the stage lift, I think she must have used stage lift number two. It was on stage for the entire show, by the way. I was on stage for the entire show, by the way. Yeah, she's just like, by the way, not the murderer, just saying. Couldn't possibly be me. <laughs> You're on stage the whole time? Are you sure about that? There is no question. The entire audience could testify to that fact. What's more, she was cl shown clearly in the TV footage as well. She has an accomplice! That probably makes sense. I couldn't possibly have killed Mysterious. Not little old me. 
Therefore, the only person who could have killed the victim under stage is the accused. Furthermore, by using a stage lift, even a petite young lady could have raised the dead bo uh, the body up to the stage without difficulty. You've got to be kidding me. She could <clears throat> have raised the dead. <laughs> you can get subpoenas at work sometimes, not for me, but for paramedics. Is that is that because you need uh, they need to be there to be like what you saw, what happened, mm. and so on. Mm. Yeah. I guess it's like an official summons. It's not like a, like I ha you have to be, it's not also like wrapped up with you're forced to do it, right? It's like, no, you're officially required, asked to come, right? Very well, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. Press everything about the sussy bitch. Sussy bitch. You said that you're a huge fan of Trucy Wright. Uh, Trucy's, isn't that right? Oh yes, even I became an, I even became a magician because I wanted to be just like her. The first time I saw her, she was performing at the Wonder Bar. She was only in junior high back then, but she was got up on stage with tons of confidence. And then she proceeded to win my heart with her astonishing tricks and winning smile. Hmm, she certainly sounds like she means all of that. So finally being able to perform with her must have been quite a treat for you, right? Oh yes, after all, it was my chance to find... chance to have her see me. Not just as a fan, but as a fellow magician. Ah, Yay! little bunny buns. I'm at, some nerds, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> but then that horrible accident happened. It was not an accident. It was murder. Witness, please explain if you would. How a small young woman such as Trucy Wright could have raised to the body. Hold it! What makes you think it would be possible? It's not like you tried it out yourself, right? Well, uh... Actually, we did try it out for ourselves. You did? Detective Sky, if you would. Oh! Uh, so that's why you made me do that. Detective Sky, what did he what did he have you do? Um, the prosecutor asked me to try raising one of the male police officers with a stage lift, without a single word of explanation as to why he was making me do it. You're kidding. It's as if he can't, really can foresee all of our car counter arguments. Hmm. <laughs> Do not underestimate this humble servant of the Holy Mother. More like haughty. <laughs> I guess that means Trucy could have lifted a dead body up. Does that mean? <laughs> Emma's here. Emma's here, and she's back on her snacku bin. Yeah, she's, she's stressed, stressed now. <laughs> And she's been, she's gotten the same treatment, the gumshoe treatment, where it's just like, if she doesn't do her job, she gets uh, a buttload of problems. <laughs> Give me a hot second, I'm getting a hot. Here goes. Ooh, it's getting spicy today. <clears throat> Is what possible? Could Trucy really have what, Mr. Femme? Please, finish your sentence. Well, I, uh... Don't try to beat around the bush. Come right out and say it. Why not tell this court what you really believe? What I really believe? Of course I... Of course I don't believe Trucy would ever commit murder. Such an amazing and wonderful magician would never do such a thing. But taking all the facts into account, what else can I think? <clears throat> I know at least... I know of at least three other unflattering things you really think about, Trucy. How can you attack this girl when she is obviously speaking with reserve? <clears throat> there is such a thing as reading between the lines, Mr. Justice. It's sad how the youth of today lack the ability to do such a basic thing. It's like nobody wants to work anymore. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> looking at looking at me like that is not going to help me stick my. F <laughs> looking at me like that isn't going to help me stick my foot in my mouth less, Your Honor. <laughs> Witness, please describe what the accused might have used to lift to to lift the dead body. I can words. <laughs> All right. I can words just fine. Stage lift number two. 
Stage lift number two. You mean the stage lift shown here on the left? That's right. With a stage lift, I think even a small girl could easily lift a dead body up to the stage. And so that makes her the murderer, in your opinion. Oh, of course not. I believe in Trucy. I believe in Trucy, right? Like I said, I'm not. I'm a huge fan of hers. Oh, brother. How long is she going to keep this act up? Defense, what position was stage lift number two in after the show? Let's see. If I recall, it was in a fully raised position. Oh! And the reason why it was fully raised is because the accused used it to lift the victim's body. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, uh. Feel free to slowly mull it over while you roast over the flames of hell, you evil red pepper! So now I'm also evil? Hold it! You didn't have a single spare moment to slip down to the understage passage? Huh? Don't tell me you suspect me now. I'm just trying to do my job by fully examining your alibi. Apollo, you have devil horns for hair. <laughs> Depending on how solid it is, I might have to suspect you, yes. You gotta be kidding me. Don't spit on my head and tell me it's raining, lawyer boy. Okay, wow. I'm right here in the footage. Or are you too much of an idiot to see? Okay, cool. She's getting a little rowdy. Huh? <laughs> Mr. Fame, are you still feeling? Are you feeling all right? You seem suddenly different. Um, oops. Oh, where did that come from, right? Oh my, I seem to have snapped there for a second, didn't I? <laughs> <What's> up, Shia? <laughs> You didn't just snap, you broke character just now. In any case, I was on stage the whole time, performing magic. I mean, you saw me in the footage, right? My dazzling and flawless performance. F flawless? That's odd, considering what you told me. You said that you'd made a mistake with where you positioned Mr. Hat. <laughs> oh, that's what I was I caught you, bitch! I caught you! <laughs> Mr. Fame, what, uh, to what, uh, to what is the defense referring? Oh, well, I made a little mistake on stage. I was in charge of operating Mr. Hat, you see. According to the script, I was supposed to place him to the left of the coffin. But I flubbed it up and made him stand to the right of the coffin instead. And because of that mistake, Trucy had to move the stage lifts around. I feel really bad about missing Trucy up like that with my goof. Tee -hee. If she's Bonnie, where the heck is Clyde? Yeah, uh, I know, right? That is, um, what's his face? Uh, RDJ, fun bun RDJ. <laughs> Roger ratings? Yeah, Roger ratings. Roger Rabbit. But it's like Roger Rabbit, yeah, I guess that's a joke. That's the joke. Darn it. I don't see any inconsistencies in her testimony. Look <laughs> <laughs> the Anya face. <laughs> now, do you see who the real killer is? Come on, Gramps. Don't just sit there. Hand down your ruling pronto. Do it quick before you keel over up there. I beg your pardon? Oops. Oh, what's gotten into me? I'm so sorry. I give her a... I gave her another five minutes before she tears off that mask. She was like straight up the hee <laughs> hee, not hee <laughs> hee, kitty meme right here. <laughs> well, defense. Are you ready to let it all go now How before times, I break into song? How many times have I told you we're not owned by Disney? We don't have the rights for this. <laughs> I gotta get us fucking all, get all fired here, man. You know how much expense is gonna be to the fight at Disney? <laughs> Disney lawsuits fucking crazy. Like, <laughs> no, of course not. I'll never give up. I see. I suppose this too is fate. The sacred scriptures of Quranism describes a variety of hells for the damned. For someone like you who struggles ceaselessly against his fate, Papal Bulg. Bulgig. Bulgig seems most appropriate. People boil what? Oh, wait, that's Chinese. 
What sort of terrible place is this people boiling? Oh, oh pe people boiling. People boiling. Yeah. A place where the m more one struggles, the further one falls into the abyss. At the bottom of the abyss, a ferocious beast awaits. Think of it as something akin to an antelion's sandpit trap. Oh, there's one of those in my backyard. Oh, wow. Kernus Held is closer to home than I thought. Now then, I would, it would appear that the witness's testimony supports the prosecution's claims. That the defendant is the only one who could have killed the victim under stage. Uh, are we how are we supposed to get out of this jam? Hey, Apollo. If you can't, can't find any contradictions, maybe it's time to use some of our analytical psychology. If I can't find trouble, I'm gonna make it. <laughs> you mean... I heard some discord in Bonnie's voice while she was testifying. See? Widget is picking up on the noise in her heart, too! That's right! Athena can hear things other can't, others can't with her super sensitive hearing. I will break you! <laughs> she can hear the emotions of people, uh, the emotions people suppress as a kind of noise or discord in her voice, in their voices. Alright, Athena, let's give it a try! You got it! Hold it! Your Honor, I'm afraid our witness, Mr. Fame, is suffering under terrible traumatic stress due to this horrible incident. She is? Yes, what with that terrible death on stage and her beloved Trucy getting arrested, she is under an awful strain and shock. In fact, I don't know how much more she can take before she's unfit to testify. What? <laughs> oh, I've heard of that. What is it called? Postal stress disorder, right? It's where a person becomes uncontrollably angry, I think. Postal? <laughs> Just go. I read about I think I read about it somewhere. That's going postal, your honor. This is PTSD. <laughs> oh my. So that's why the witness acts so hostile at times, as if she were a different person. Yes. And I think that her condition is clouding her memory of the incident. Therefore, I suggest a short therapy session for the witness. Uh, huh? Therapy? You don't know the first thing about a magician's mental health. I've risked my life jumping through those rings of fire, having my body sawn in half. Oopsies. Oh boy, I have to watch my temper, don't I? <laughs> She's going to snap. Oh my god. I will I... break you. Miss Sachs, please do whatever you can to help this unfortunate young lady. And what exactly is this child planning to do, Mr. Justice? With her super sensitive hearing, Miss Sachs can hear a witness's true emotions. Simply from the tone of an inflection, she can tell exactly what a person is feeling. <laughs> Athena, you're a liar. You're not a therapist. Even I can pick out feelings that a witness is trying to suppress or hide. I can even. Which it projects the emotions I hear into a mood matrix where I can analyze them. It sounds like some sort of spurious devilry. Though I find it hard to believe, I must ask, how do emotions constitute evidence? Hmm. While I won't say that emotions can be taken as evidence per se, I have seen how instrumental Miss Sachs work has been in cracking a case. Therefore, I wholly support giving it a try. I see. If you are in favor of it, your honor, then I have no objections. Even this mere monk can see that something disturbs the witness. Ooh. She is quite disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll disturb you! <laughs> oh, thank you for understanding, Prosecutor Sanmari! Apollo, you remember how to conduct a therapy session, right? You want me to leave the session? Of course! You're a therapist just like I am, which is not at all, which <laughs> makes you perfectly... <laughs> capable. Capable. You're right, I can do anything I want, regardless of accreditation or not. <laughs> Hell, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do right now, go to the hospital, perform some brain surgery. <laughs> You're right! You're the lead on this case, after all. I believe in you! I believe in me! <laughs> You're fine, Apollo! I am fine! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I made a made a, made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I 
shouldn't have encouraged this. <laughs> Fair enough. Huh. Uh, Do I need a refresher? I don't need to know anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think I still remember from the last time, so let's get it right done. Let's get it right here. <laughs> this is par for the course considering who their mentor is. Oh, are you ready, Widget? Let's do this! Beep boop, beep boop, boop, beep boop. Uh, just make sure you don't look into the Naruto folder. <laughs> 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 Uh, uh Rhea, sadness, evil trucy. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I was on stage at the time. What a terrible mistake. But she was sad? That's she was sad it was yeah. that someone killed, I guess. So much trouble. I feel okay. so sad about it. Okay. Ugh. Okay, girl. Ugh. What is this? What I is feel this? So sad what is about that? It. What is this? <laughs> I have to say, Mr. T Mr. Femme, you really are a strange one. <laughs> Even though you said I feel bad about it, you s it seems that you're it seems you were feeling happy about it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think I can guess why you were feeling happy. It must be because uh, you messed Trucy up. Yes. I think you were happy because you messed the defendant up. Mm -mm. I'm right, aren't I? Y you gotta be kidding me. Why would I be happy I messed Trucy up? I'm a big fan of hers. Because we saw you. I hate her. I loathe her. I can't stand that Trucy, right? Just because she's a good little good at magic, she thinks she's all that. So this is exactly what that sniveling rat deserves. We saw how we saw how you said you hated Trucy Wright. You how you were glad that she was in trouble, and even how it was what she deserved. No. Okay, first of all, that I, that like, came out of nowhere. No, okay. the the fact that the lawyer can just be like, "I saw you did it," and somehow not, then somehow be like, "Yeah, that's that's one hundred percent true." Yeah, that's feels a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it looks like I hit the bunny on the head, so to speak. Ooh. Apollo, the noise level dropped. Now, if we could get it down to zero percent. Well, Mr. Fame, are you ready to confess how you really feel? What? What do you mean? I'm Bunny, the sweet, cute little bunny. I'm a rookie magician working hard to be just like my idol, Trucy. That's the character I'm supposed to be. Objection! Keep that up, Mr. Fame, and you're going to have a mental breakdown. Just let yourself be who you really are. Who, who I really am. The two sides of you are fighting each other and doing you psychic harm. I can hear them. Two distinct voices battling inside you. There are two wolves inside you. <laughs> Well, how does that Twitter Twitter meme go? There's uh, two wolves inside of you. Uh, the one that grows is the one you feed, or something. Oh. <laughs> Shut your pie hole! You know nothing. You know it all. I mean, you mustn't say things like that, or I might get flustered. Mr. Fame, how long do you insist on maintaining this wolf and sheep's clothing act? We can't end this therapy session until you get real with us. Set the wild beast inside you free! Here she comes. One is gay, the other is gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, Michael Claude. <laughs> oh, there's the Anya, fa Anya face. <laughs> don't make me laugh. You don't know a dang thing about me. You want to see who I really am? Fine. Take a good look. <gasps> da -da 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 -da. Magic girl time! Magic girl of evil! Oh, oh. oh spooky! So spooky! <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? Sheep's clothing? Oh, you've got it all wrong! It's a rabbit suit I've got on! 
And I'm not a wolf. I'm a blood-sucking vampire. A bat with fangs and wings. <laughs> I, I think we just opened Pandora's box. <laughs> I'm finally done with that goody two choose cocktail act. Cottontail. Cottontail. Cock and tail act, yes, yes exactly. Yes, I've heard of that before. That Cock shit insane is what she is. Yes. <laughs> she's a she's a what's she called? Water? She's what? a Water what is she called? A vampire? Like yeah, a she's vampire. a vampire. She's a bloodsucker, all right. Cock and tail act, predatory meeting. <laughs> Joyce is just like, <laughs> it's a very I can I can words today. Uh, Joyce can words. Cock and words. I feel free as a bat. <laughs> Strangely turned on right now. <laughs> Defense, your fair possession has taken a turn for the worse from the looks of it. Uh, there's a perfectly good explanation for this, isn't there, Miss Sykes? Um, <laughs> me thinks I created a monster. Wait, boy! <laughs> <Feel out. laughs> hey, you lobster boy. Whoa, who, me? You think I'm glad she sees in trouble? That I think she's getting her just desserts? Well, guess what? You're right! <laughs> I mean... <laughs> that is a cute little exchange. Uh, the, the, her, her bunny ears are actually just uh, a vampire. Uh, sorry. Uh, bat ears, yeah. technically, yeah. That's cute. Yeah. It's very cute. Uh, uh, does this does this mean you admit to wishing the defendant harm? Well, the bat's out of the bag now. <laughs> that mistake of mine was a work of art. Thanks to my goof, poor little Trucy had to do all that hard physical labor. When you said hard physical labor, what are you referring to? Because of Mr. Hat's new position, Trucy had to move both of those huge stage lifts. They must have been so heavy. What a riot. <laughs> That's strange. Athena, could you please add that last statement to Bonnie's testimony? All right. I'll update the mood matrix with the new info. Huh? Hey, Apollo. Now there's a new inconsistency in the testimony. Yeah, she finally slipped up. So what do I need to do now? Well, from this point on forward, you just have to do what you do best. Find the contradiction in the testimony and present evidence to refute it. All right, I've got you now, Bonnie DeFame. Back to being a lawyer. Uh, Mr. Reyes, move the body with the lift. She ended up having to move the stage lifts. Yeah. This one, right? Or uh, the last the part? Last oh, the one. updated part, yeah. <laughs> she turned into a cut. <laughs> Serves her right. Thanks to that, she had to move the stage lifts. Yes. But there's an issue with that. Uh, if she had moved the stage lift after the fact, that means she couldn't have put the bodies in there and, and done everything. Is that right? Uh, t Trucy's statement. Uh, but yes, yes, that's... that's... Where's Trucy's statement? Yeah, she before but the moved uh, Petrucci moved the stage lifts to cover for Bonnie's mistakes, and she told nobody about this. It was already in the opposition. Yeah, it was already in the opposition when she had arrived. Objection! That doesn't make sense. What? So you think I'm batshit crazy now? Huh? Is that what it is? Are you specious? <laughs> no, that's not the point I was trying to make. But I don't hear you denying it. Because you're a fucking crazy motherfucking <laughs> You're full of guano, ma'am. <laughs> Mr. Fame, allow me to repeat your statement. And thanks to that, she ended up having to move the stage lifts. <laughs> that's right. And I still say that's just what she... Shut your fucking mouth! <laughs> but how did you know? How did you know Miss Wright moved the stage lifts? Huh? <laughs> According to her own statement, she didn't tell anyone that she had done so. What? So how could you have possibly have known that she had done? Uh, how could you have possibly have known what she had done, unless you saw her? You saw Miss Wright moving the lifts in the understage passage, didn't you? 
hit Blustered. Oh, you were sp <laughs> You did it, Apollo! Noise levels are at zero percent! Can you cut me a piece of this? All right, we're gonna do some, uh... Oh, okay. We're gonna do a little bit of, uh, durian food here, cause, uh... Eleven said so. Just give me like a quarter. So yes, we do have that lovely durian button. So I will take a partake of some durian. Uh, oh god, I smell it. Uh, from here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here comes the, what was it? What was that meme? Here He's like, do you want to eat some durian? No. And then it's just like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it smells icky. I don't like it. Do it for the vine. <sighs> there are still three quarters of this rice cake. There's still three quarters of this rice cake. Admittedly, the cost has gone up because the rash is a little bitch. Shut your mouth, <laughs> man. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. <laughs> you just gotta enjoy it. <laughs> That's actually not that bad. Actually, with the coffee, it was really good. Because the coffee tends to like kill the, uh, I'm not, no, not good enough for me to continuously do. <laughs> Weak, I'm disappointed. 75,000. No, stop it. <laughs> there you go, Elevens. I ate it. It's decent. It's, again, this, this, one, this one's not that bad. That's why I took a beer bite of it. Usually I just be like, like a sliver of it. But this one is not too bad. The, um, I guess the powdery glutinous part of it, like mix, like mixes well. So like the smell gets covered up by a nice sweet, sweet taro taste. So, or a sweetened taste. All right. But Mr. Justice. Wouldn't that mean? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Defame herself was under the stage when, the, when their victim was killed. And I hardly need to tell the court what that means. <laughs> you are one artful liar, Miss Defame, and one spectacular suspect. <laughs> I let her do me still. Yeah, she's freaking hot. <laughs> Why, you shiny red lobster boy! I also love the fact that she literally switches sides. So now she's right-handed instead of left-handed. <laughs> You're saying I kill Mysterious? I'm saying that it's a possibility. What's more? I say you're a sol- I say you had a solid motive to frame my client for murder as well. Objection. My apologies for reigning on the defense's merry revelry. But you seem to have forgotten one very important point. Oh, really? The TV footage. As you can clearly see, Mr. Fame was on the stage the whole time. The entire audience can bear witness to that fact, including you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You have just taken a long and senseless journey, only to return to the starting line. The witness could not have been the understaged passage, which means the only one left who could have killed the victim is the accused. Mm, he's an accomplice. Ah! Oh, guess our party's over. Uh, but, but, Mr. Fane knew something she couldn't have known unless she was under the stage. How could you possibly explain that, Prosecutor Satamati? It's quite simple. The accused must have told Miss Defame about it, but then forgot. Huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Open those useless eyes of yours and take a good look at the footage. Huh. If Miss Defame really was on the s in the understage passage, it would mean she was on stage and understage at the same time. 
You mean she was in two places at once? That does seem to be the only explanation that makes any sense. It may be an explanation, but I'm not so sure about the make sense part. Then we'll then we'll have to make it make sense. It's twins! <laughs> Your Honor, the witness was both on stage and under stage at the same time. That is the defense's assertion. Hmm. I heard some illogical things come out of you before, but this is absurd. <laughs> I'm sure you'll change your tune once you hear my reasoning, Your Honor. My gut tells me you're bluffing, but I'll bet. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, Mr. Justice. How do you explain how the witness was in two places at once? Um, there's a fake Bonnie. There were two Bonnies. Is there two Bonnies? <gasps> Maybe they are two Bonnies. Maybe they're twins. twins. Is it twins? There's a mysterious fingerprint. That is true. That we don't, we don't have a... And yeah, there were two Bonnies because there's a mysterious fingerprint. And... Yeah, I think she might she might have a twin. <laughs> because the fingerprints would be the only distinguishable part of it. Even twins have different fingerprints. And that was a thing that um Emma pointed Mentioned, out. Yeah. yeah. There were two Bonnies, Your Honor. If that were the case, it would all make sense, wouldn't it? There were two of them? I suspected you have a few screws loose, but now I see some are missing altogether. Is there a toolkit in this courtroom, Your Honor? I suppose two. No, three screws to the head should brighten this putrid brain. Hmm. Very well, Bailiff. Could you? <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, please listen to my argument. Very well. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to at least give it a list. As was argued earlier, Mr. Fame show is shown on the footage the whole time. But at the same time, she was also watching Miss Wright in the understage passage. The only possible explanation is that there are two Bonnies. Hmm, that almost sounds like it makes sense. What do you think, Prosecutor Sadamari? Fucking this humble servant of Holy Mother is of the opinion that we should lose no time in replacing the defense's lo many lost screws. I'll fucking screw you, I swear to God. <laughs> Oh, I'd like to see you try. Yeah, I'll fucking screw you all night long. Is that what you want? I'll do it. I can do it. <laughs> but Apollo, it, do it goes against reality itself to say that one person is actually two. But we don't have to be bound by reality. After all, we're talking about magic here. You do and a know that? And a magical Japan Euphoria court system that apparently works somehow. I don't know. So if the Bonnie defame on the footage is the real Bonnie, then the Bonnie here on the witness stand, the one who must have been, uh, the one, the Bonnie here on the witness stand, the one who must have been under stage, this Bonnie to fame is our second, second Bonnie. Hey! She is? Say we call the one in front of us Bonnie too. Why does Apollo say Ms. Wright like she's his wife? <laughs> I mean, when you're when you're on the on the uh, Defense, in court, yeah, you he's just being polite. Yeah, she is. <laughs> I, I hope to God they are. That's a lot of incest right there. I see. This is going to be a very problematic. I, oh. I read that fanfic. <laughs> <laughs> I see. This is going to be one of the problematic streams. Oh, we've already established that today. Yeah. No. Oh, then please submit your evidence, Mr. Justice. What proves the existence of a Bonnie number two? The, uh, Pr the print marks that uh, showed up here. Bonnie and a set of unknown. Take that. Take that. What's this? During our investigation, we found a set of unknown prints on the coffin on the stage. These prints were most likely left during the course of the show. When are these Ace Attorney Street's problematic? But they didn't match the prints of, of any of the people involved in this case. Again, this is why our streams are marked mature. <laughs> it's an unknown third party's prince. Why can't we just run a background check on this Bonnie and be like, yeah, she has a sister. Of course she does. Instead of just like, ah, uh, there were unknown fingerprints. Ah, uh, there were two Bonnies seen at the same place at the same time. Ah, uh, like just, 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 just ask her. <laughs> Do the background check. Come on. <laughs> Apollo and Trucy are half siblings. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, they are. Which still doesn't make things any different. <laughs> I don't know why we were just trying to make this work. <laughs> they don't know about it that yet? They do not, know. I see that is the beginning of a, pl of a porn video. <laughs> yeah, that, well, I'm pretty sure that was the theme of one of my Naruto episodes. <laughs> anyway. 
I was not told of this. Emma must have kept it from him. So the question is, who could these prints possibly belong to? Oh, she's sweating, bros. <laughs> Mr. Fam, or should I say Bonnie number two? These are your fingerprints, aren't they? Uh. Ooh, the rosary's come off. Oh, the rosary's coming off. Enough of this foolishness. One person could not possibly be two. Those fingerprints could have been left, not during the show, not only during the show, but at any time. It's not like you to lose your cool like that, Prosecutor Sadamati. Shut your whore mouth, you don't know anything about me. I know everything about you. You're a stupid piece of stupid poopy face. <laughs> And I'm sure you know that. Exactly when the fingerprints were made is not the main issue. What do you mean that by that, Mr. Justice? The ish. Oh, sorry. These <laughs> 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 are my lines, okay? I get paid per line. If you take them from me, I have to eat ramen. <laughs> <laughs> the issue is who who of do these unknown prints belong to? There's they certainly do not this they're certainly not Bonnie DeFames. But what if they belong to a person standing right in front of us? Oh, you mean Bonnie number two is the second Bonnie? Is that what you're implying? Yes, that's what Bonnie number two implies. Yeah. It's preposterous to suggest that those prints belong to the witness. I say they must belong to some other unknown individual. Prosecutor Sadamati, can you really look at her and still say that? <laughs> What are you looking at? Take a picture. It'll last longer. Actually, now that I mention it, the fact that she changes hands is probably indicative of the fact that she's a twin. Twins? Because usually that's what happens, right? Like, twins will be dominant in different hands because they're split, right? I don't know. I think maybe. I'll Not know. always. I don't think so. I could I could be wrong. Uh, how could this be? <laughs> Apollo would be like, take that, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> we check her prints, I'm sure they'll match the unknown set. I wholeheartedly believe this particular judge is the only judge that will take right agency <laughs> cases. I got good dinner uh, stories. No one else will put up with their shenanigans. The, yeah, the Canadian judge is like, this is kind of stupid, eh? <laughs> like, hey, like, this is why I don't, like, last time I took one of your cases on, I almost got blown up. <laughs> Not very fun. <laughs> The Canadian judge appears once, and, and that's because they, inter they interrupt that court case involving a involving the judgment of another person involved in the previous uh, previous court case. So, yeah, yeah. the judge is near retiring. Yeah. Like he needs more stories for the dinner table. Well, Bonnie, the prince that don't belong to the real you belong to you. Uh, I prints that yeah. up. Belong to you, don't they, Bonnie? Number two. Yeah. <laughs> Witness, is what the defense say? Uh, is what the defense has said true? <laughs> Fine, I admit it. The fingerprints are mine. Then does that mean you are Bonnie DeFame? What? Ridiculous. <laughs> he's, he's literally clutching his pearls. Yeah, quite so. literally clutching his pearls. Ah, my, my word. Ah. <laughs> Whoa, there's two of them now? Jackpot. <laughs> the one guy is just like living his dream. Can't we get a new judge? We do have a new judge. It's the exact same judge as this one, uh, but is in Korean. <laughs> uh, who has the exact same accent for some strange reason. Also Texan. Are there really two Bonnies? Nope, there's only one Bonnie. That's because I'm Betty. Ah, Bonnie and Betty. Betty the same. What? Seriously, are you are you really that daft? Ladies and gentlemen of the court, it is time for a wondrous magic show. Because that's how they do the teleportation thing. Gasp in amazement as this Lego morphing illusionist performs her teleportation magic. Watch closely. It's showtime. Da, 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 da. Holy crap, she literally- Oh fuck! <laughs> she fucking bounced! Oh, there she- Oh, cute! <laughs> that is kind of cute. Yoo-hoo! I just got the bunny. And even <laughs> Athena's like, yay! <laughs> oh, damn, that's a saucy little leg switch. Oh, uh, I 
I'm the strangest boner right now. <laughs> <laughs> the guy in the crowd, jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> What an amazing trick! The witness has suddenly the witness has suddenly split into two people. <laughs> oh god, how are you gonna do this? Ah, uh, no, they're just gonna be the same. They're... It's not a trick, no gimmick either. We're simply twins. What? Twins? Jackpot! <laughs> <laughs> twins, Basil. Twins. <laughs> it's never twins. It's never twins. <laughs> So that's how the teleportation teleportation trick works. Ever since our debut, I've had to hide or pretend I'm Bonnie. All cute and sweet and goody goody. I can't tell you how stressful it's been. Okay, so maybe the one Bonnie actually does adore. Um, yeah, so Bonnie actually might adore yeah, Bonnie, Tracy, but Bonnie uh, properly Betty, likes yeah. Ben, uh, proper, and Betty's just a bitch. <laughs> and of course, Bonnie is too soft to, to be like, I don't want to do this, right? Yeah. So yes, yeah, the evil twin. <laughs> Oh, let's see here. But I don't have to hide anymore. That's right. Our days of sneaking around are finally over. Their cover is blown, but they actually seem pretty happy about it. So, which of you is the nice Bonnie to fame we met in the dressing room? That would be me. And the sharp-tongued Bonnie we saw in the ratings... Ra uh, and the sharp-tongued Bonnie we saw in the with the ratings, Raja? Under stage was. Hey, who are you calling sharp tongued? It's all starting to make sense now. The fingerprints have been updated. Bonnie and Betty's. Ooh. So, Mr. Justice, this changes the facts of the case rather dramatically, doesn't it? It certainly does. During the show, it was Bonnie who was on stage the whole time. So, Bonnie couldn't have committed the crime. But Betty, on the other hand, who was under stage, did have the opportunity. I swear to God, why is it always twins? Let's see here. Well, so we... Well, well, so we now have two suspects. Wait just a minute there, Lobster Boy. I didn't do it! That's right. Betty might have a foul mouth, but she'd never kill anybody. Hey, who's got a foul mouth here? Oh. <laughs> oh, uh... Well, speak up, huh? Hold it! Oh, oh. So, I, I hear you like to well, like, curse sometimes. What's your favorite word? Uh... Probably? Fuck? <laughs> Probably fuck? <laughs> 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 What's your favorite curse word? Probably fuck. Probably fuck. <laughs> okay. Please save your please save your sibling sibling quabbles uh, squabbling for later. <sighs> Betty, you must have been in the understage passage during the show. Otherwise, you wouldn't have known about the stage lifts being moved. So, what exactly were you doing down there? Fine. I'll testify. Anything to get you off my back. Prosecutor Sadamari. Betty Defame is ready to testify. What do you see? <laughs> Just... <Fuck. laughs> this place is stupid. <laughs> Betty, you lied to this humble servant of the Holy Mother. Hey, what else could I do? I could blow our cover and ruin our magic act. <laughs> Besides, I'm gonna go to your twilight hell or whatever. Oh, what? Am I gonna go to your twilight hell or whatever for being a liar? You will indeed. However, it won't be after your death. Rather. Oh shit! I shall give you a taste of your punishment on this mortal coil, in interrogation hell. <laughs> oh Sad shit! <laughs> Kinky. <laughs> My pearls. Now then, Miss. Now then, Betty Defame, please explain to this court what exactly you were doing under the stage. <laughs> now, what was I doing under the stage? <laughs> it's true, I had business in the understage passage because of the upcoming trick. It was the fire trick, right? The one Mysterious was supposed to do. 
That's right. It was a very dangerous trick, so I had to make sure we were prepared for it. It was in the script. I really wanted to see it, but I couldn't because of the accident. Shut up! You're gonna give it away. Anyway, I was real busy. Yeah, way too busy to have the chance to kill Mysterious. Ooh. Suspicious. Sus. Well, that was certainly different. <laughs> now that's... How's that for a flawless testimony and alibi? Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> the hands. Our magic is real. It's not a trick or a gimmick. You see the hands holding yeah. her up. <laughs> oh my, she's floating. Uh, Your Honor? You can see that she's being held up from below. Wait, you're supposed to pretend you don't see that. It's a little thing. It's a, it's a little something called etiquette. But oh, I can't help it. Whenever I see a contradiction or inconsistency, I just have to point it out. It's like a compulsion or something. Now then, the defense may begin its cross-examination. bucket um the yeah. fire trick the fire trick the one mr reyes was supposed to do it was a very dangerous trick so we had to prepare for it uh it was in the strip but i couldn't see it because of the accident uh the si the third statement about it's a very dangerous trick we had to prepare for it mm -hmm. but the fire bucket was never prepared yeah because it was bone dry it was dusted Ugh. objection holding that booty yeah i feel i feel like it makes sense that Betty's the one being held up, while Bonnie has to be, like, the bottom. Because <laughs> she's, mm. she's a bot. <laughs> He's like, ah, I just gotta do that. I hate to break this to you, Betty, but there's a big flaw in your testimony. As big as the one in that floating trick you did earlier. Uh, can't stick around. Okay, we'll see you next time, Brendan. Yeah, bye. Ooh, harsh words. Well, let me tell you something, forehead boy. No one has ever figured out how we do our teleportation trick. No one except me, you mean. Well, <laughs> we have even better tricks up our sleeves. Huh? We do? I told you to keep it zipped. Now, now, don't fight, you two. Mr. Justice, what's this about a flaw in the testimony? The script, the script has this to say about the fire trick. This will be dangerous. Make sure the fire bucket is ready. However, we found the fire bucket lying empty backstage, except for a layer of dust. D I I Bonk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you didn't even attempt to get ready for the next trick, did you, Betty? Because he was dead. Yeah. You got me! Listen, listen, I have twins here, Basil. Twins. I, <laughs> I need a favor. <laughs> Funny twins. Yeah. Betty to fame. You will explain yourself. Yeah, there's nothing to explain. Come on, Betty. We can't hide it any longer. You might as well tell them. Betty's Bonnie's the real freak, and Betty's the vanilla one. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a tsundere, tsundere act. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shut up. You can barely take care of yourself. Don't try and tell me what to do. I mean, if you would just let me try those things in bed. <laughs> just let me play with, like, like, put some more toys in our act. <laughs> Wait. Uh -huh. Well, if neither one of you will explain, I guess I'll have to. The reason Betty didn't prepare for the fire trick is because she knew it wouldn't go down. Uh, she knew the show wouldn't go on. Yes. You didn't prepare for the fire trick because you knew, didn't you? You knew that the body would be found, and that the show would be cancelled! Rabble, ah! rabble, 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 rabble. Don't be ridiculous, you insignificant speck of a man! I'm gonna yank those lame bangs of yours off! Is that what you want, huh? I do like a little pulley play, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, you do like having your hair pulled, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, they can grow back! Now stop stalling and just tell us the truth already. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Re I can't reveal my secrets. I'm a magician. Objection. 
You have been chasing the shadows of an illusory culprit defense. Quite power. <laughs> and having chanced upon a convenient target, you have let yourself get carried away. Exactly! Where's your proof, huh? And yet, I can see that the witness's taste for false words have also been proven. I advise you to confine your deceitful trickery to your magic act, witness. Deceitful trickery! Objection. As your court-appointed therapist, which again, I'm neither qualified nor able, <laughs> neither am nor qualified I to do. I substantiate. I'd like to add something here, Betty. You finally let yourself be who you really are. But if you can t continue to hide behind lies, you'll just be imprisoning your heart all over again. Huh. But all these questions mean you're trying to put me in prison for real. So I'll be behind bars either way. Does that mean you're admitting your guilt? Of course not. I can't believe you people. Every one of you thinks I did something, didn't you? You... Lobster boy, cue ball geezer, headcase brat, server's monk! Wow, okay, sass. <laughs> wow, she really snapped, didn't she? That's so hot. <laughs> cue ball geezer. Headcase brat? Really? I swear I'm older than you. But Betty, calm down. Come on now. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. <sighs> oh, look. I'm not the murderer, I tell you. Then how did you know? Uh, then how did you know the show would be canceled? Uh, would be called off before the fire trick? I, I told you, we can't reveal our secrets. We're under contract. NBAs, man. <laughs> oh, you know what? They might have been. They might have been drafted Compelled. into a shit, shitty deal. Uh. Yeah. Contract. What is she talking about? Be that as it may, you're obviously a suspect in this case. Give me patience. <laughs> <laughs> Great holy mother, give me patience patience. I need I need all the patience I can right now. I'm beginning to see the karmic threads that make up the intricate tapestry that is this case. Huh? Allow me to summarize your, your assertions, defense. Wow, I can Let read. me allow me to summon that big ass of yours, defense. <laughs> First, that the victim was killed in the understage passage. And second, that the witness and the accused are the only two who could have done it. Exactly. What's more, Betty knew that the body would be found. And that the magic show would then be called off. Therefore, it's reasonable to conclude that Betty killed the victim under stage. But what if Betty knew that the show would be called off for some other reason? Like what? In the course of my investigation, I found it strange that the dragon's set piece fell when it did. That in conjunction with the body tumbling from the coffin in such a dramatic fashion, all seemed too perfect for mere happenstance. <laughs> Every time makes the hand moves, just like it was uh, as though the entire chain of events had been planned out in advance. Uh oh! Uh, uh, oh. Planned out. After deciding to take this case, I scrupulously studied everything I could about the mass media of this country. I read the newspaper, old news reports. I even browsed tabloid magazines. I've learned a lot about you, Apollo Justice. <gasps> <laughs> what other media have you seen me in? <laughs> Listen, I was poor and I needed money to get through law school. <laughs> oh, I've, I, I, I've certainly joined your OnlyFans. <laughs> Listen, Pete Pick are totally okay, all right? No one knows it, it's me anyway. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Athena is the younger one. Yeah, she's like what, eighteen? Like she's like super young for to be a lawyer. Yeah. 
How very industrious of you. I'm impressed. During this process, I learned about a strange practice favored by the TV world. It's called ratings. <laughs> A practice called the hidden camera prank. Oh. Ah! Uh, candid cameras or something? Mm. Yeah. Betty and Bonnie, you knew about this, did you not? About the dead body appearing, the set piece falling, and the show being suspended. Oh, Betty and Bonnie are 19, damn. You two are informed of this plan. By Take Two TV in advance, correct? Oh, the candid camera yeah. show. That's uh, uh That's uh the ratings rajas yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah. Is that true? Betty, please. Let's tell them now. I can't hold it in anymore. <laughs> Dang it. Fine. You got us. <laughs> the real culprit is capitalism. <laughs> yeah. All along. Mass and and mainstream media is trying to hide it from you. <laughs> Everything the prosecutor said is true. The TV station paid us to cooperate with them on this plan. It was all a prank. A big set of planned out in advance. Mr. V is showing up dead in the coffin. The set piece falling down. It was all completely scripted. Wow, murder was scripted. Thanks. All right. It was all a prank. <laughs> it's just a prank, bro. It was just a prank, bro. Just a harmless murder prank. Bonnie, is this really true? He, yes. Mr. Reus was supposed to pretend to be dead. That's how it was supposed to go. Okay, so he was in on it. He was getting his revenge as well, but for some reason, something... Someone actually killed him. Yeah. Interesting. So he was in on it too? He may have like he may have wanted revenge, but he also probably realized that they were going to reveal the tricks, and he didn't want that to happen or something. Well, no, so... he was the one that was going to reveal the tricks. Yeah. He was the one that was going to reveal the Magnify tricks, the Grammarie tricks. Mm. That was his entire point. That's right. He was supposed to show up dead in the coffin, and then the set piece would fall down. Trucy would be shocked and start to panic. That's how the prank was scripted. How the prank script went. What? <laughs> what the hell? What the heck kind of prank is that? You know what? Now that I realize when this game came out, yeah, I can that imagine was, why that would happen. That was exactly the kind of thing that was happening on, like on TV, like prank shows. Uh, what was it? The biggest prank show was uh, Punked and a bunch of other this, other stuff like that. Mm. You see your research in that and TikToks and stuff where people are pranking each other or like yeah, Vine and on YouTube like doing prank shows and shit and on YouTube. Yeah. Now that I remember, like the the era this might have been made, this this game was built in. Yeah, I can I can totally see this happening. But we never thought he'd actually wind up dead. Yeah, that was the only thing that was different from the script. Poor mysterious. <coughs> it's I'm so completely lost right now. Well, Betty and Bonnie, it certainly sounds like you have something explaining to you. <laughs> all right, all right. I guess desperate times calls for desperate measures. <laughs> Just this once, we'll show, we'll share how it was done with you. So listen carefully. You'll never hear this kind of thing anywhere else. Yeah. Oh, bunny! Oh, and a bat. <laughs> bunny, bat. <laughs> After our teleportation trick, I went down under stage. When Mr. Rios' body appeared from the coffin on stage, it was time for Betty to do her job in the underground in the understage passage. That's right. I used the remote control for the winch connected to the dragon set piece. And made it fall down. And just before the dragon fell, I called Trucy to the backstage so she wouldn't get hurt. After that, the plan was for Mr. Rios to come back to life in front of a panicked Trucy. He was supposed to laugh and fly up away. That was how the script was, anyway. 
Well, he'll never hear this kind of thing anywhere else. We love you, big bro, Apollo. <laughs> Apollo's like... <laughs> but for some reason, he really did turn up dead. So he kind of just stayed on the ground. What kind of sick joke is that? It sounds like a terribly mean-spirited prank to me. The poor defendant was trying to do her magic show. I guess so. I'm sorry, Trucy. Hmph. <laughs> Whatever. It was all the Raiding Raj's idea anyway. Yeah. It sounds like just the kind of thing a guy like him would come up with. Um... This is the plan prank script we got from the Raiding Raja. Okay, there he comes. Mm. The corpse appearing and the set piece falling were Roger Rennett's idea. Uh, uh... Dang it! You make us made us break our contract! Now we won't get paid! Hmm. But when? Uh, but where does this all leave us? Who killed the victim? And when? Yes, exactly. Those are the key questions. If Mr. Reyes was only pretending to be dead in the coffin as part of the prank, then he was under stage. There would be still there would still be life within him. And if that was the case, then Betty, who is also under stage, may be excluded from our list of suspects. Uh, uh! Witness. Was the victim alive up until he entered the coffin? Oh, well, now that we spilled the beans, we might as well show you this video. Oh, they filmed the situation? <laughs> Greetings, viewers! Greetings, viewers! It's I, the Great Mysterious! We are currently in the middle of Trucy's escape trick. Having snuck through the underground understage passage undetected, I am now hiding backstage, <laughs> preparing to play a little prank on Trucy. I'm about to hide in the coffin, which Trucy will stab with her rubber sword, and then the coffin opens. Ho oh, ho! I will be in it, acting as though I've met the maker. <laughs> I'm gonna give him that stupid fucking, oh, uh, of stupid fucking like YouTube top ten voice. <laughs> Can you imagine that uh, the look on Trucy's face? Then, ho ho! I can hardly wait. <laughs> that, now that I know that Mr. Reyes is a fucking bag of dicks, I'm gonna give him that shitty the mm -hmm. bag of dicks voice. Mm -hmm. He's about to hide in her coffin. Hmm. It would seem the threads of karmic, karmic destiny, have led us to the truth. The victim passed through the understage where Betty DeFame was and came up into the backstage area where Betty DeFame was and came up in the onto the backstage. Yeah. We know this because Mr. Rias appeared to be backstage when he shot the video we saw. Did you notice the giant rat under the stage? Yeah. That, yeah, that thing's that was like, oh my god, that's a giant fucking rat. <laughs> oh god, we need to go back and cook that. Yeah. That's one fat fucking rat. It appears that way, yes. And defense. You proposed the following, did you not? What if the victim was killed under the stage before being put into the coffin? But then, what about this video? This footage was taken just before Mr. Rius entered the coffin. Uh, oh! Oh, so that- so does that mean... Yes. It is horrible, but true. The tragedy did indeed play out right there on the stage. Hmm. No, not necessarily. When into the coffin Mr. Rias was hiding, Trucy Wright thrust her blade. Why does he like to use the word thrust all the time? I don't know. <laughs> Do you? I feel this man is uh, watched too much uh, media. <laughs> he consumed a little bit too much American yeah. media, eh? <laughs> <laughs> See? Told you so. So are you saying the incident was a tragic accident that a, that happened during a prank? It would be an accident if the accused had no knowledge of the prank beforehand. So let us ask the accused herself. Ms. Wright, did you have prior knowledge of the prank? Ooh, did she? Ah, what? I... I... 
down, Trucy. You didn't know anything about it, right? Of course I didn't. I didn't know a thing, single thing about it. Objection. Still think you can play innocent, do you? In that case, you leave me little choice but to present this piece of evidence. It looks like some sort of note. I found this note in the dressing room after the incident. At the time, I did not understand what it meant, but all is clear to me now. Bonnie gets my new camera. What's this? Let's see. It says, get the video camera after Mr. Rees comes tumbling out. It is a note signed by the accused. Instructing Bonnie to collect Mr. Reese's video camera from him, it seems. Mm, if it's signed by her, it could have been another one of those carbon, um, copies? carbon copy situations. I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. I found it in the dressing room before the show. When I saw it, I realized that Trucy knew about the prank. It does bear her signature. I'll give you that much. So why would it have her? Uh, why would you sign that? Like I don't yeah, understand. Yeah, exactly. So the defendant had prior knowledge of the prank. It would appear so. Yes. When she learned about the pr plan to trick her, she decided to use her o use it to her own advantage. So she thrust the steel sword into the coffin where the victim stood, chuckling to himself. Is that not what happened, Miss Wright? Uh, of course not. And I didn't su write or sign that note. Ah, but the handwriting matches yours. All of the evidence and testimony points to you being the culprit. But I didn't do it! It wasn't me! Then explain the existence of this note. You can do that, can't you? I... I can't explain it. I didn't write it, so I don't understand. I didn't kill Mysterious! You've got to believe me! Silence is deafening. Continue struggling against the threads of your own karma if you wish, accused. Even as you are inescapably inescap caught in the web of fate you've spun for yourself. I don't like this prosecutor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like this prosecutor. <laughs> Ms. Wright. It is time to re resign yourself to your fate. No! I didn't do it, I... Ha! <laughs> I knew it! That sweet looking girl, a murderer! She took all of us like a sort of... I told you she was a homicidal little witch from the start! <laughs> but I didn't do it, I really didn't! Why doesn't anybody believe me? Shut up, you killer! We won't fall for that anymore! Sweat, sweat, sweat. This is bad. Now you will see my alchemy. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Sorry, every time I see that, the alchemy. Your honor, I suggest we put an end to this tragedy now. Give your official ruling and let us offer the victim's soul the last rights it deserves. It deserves? Wow, okay. Is that what he actually said? He said it deserves, yeah. Wow. Very well, I suppose I have no other choice. I hear but Oh. <gasps> Is it bro? Is it bro? Is it our big bro? Oh, the defense has an objection! Apollo! <laughs> you! Even now, you would... I won't give up, and I refuse to let either of them down! Mr. Wright, who's counting on me, and Trucy, who's putting all of her faith in me! Mr. Justice, the fact that you have raised an objection means that you have evidence with which to refute the prosecution's claims, correct? Yes, of course, Your Honor. Do we really have anything, Apollo? Actually, we do. There's one piece of evidence we can present here. 
Very well, Mr. Justice, you may proceed. As we saw in the show footage, there's no question that the defendant thrust a sword into the coffin. The defense doesn't dispute this point. But let us not forget that this was a magic show filled with tricks and illusions. We can't take everything we see as face value. Hmm. So you're saying some sleight of hand was somehow involved? Yes, the defense contends that contends that the sword the defendant used was not the cause of death. Now, what was it Juicy told me when uh, Juicy told me she did just before she thrust the sword into the coffin? Very well, let's see your evidence then, Mr. Justice. But remember, you you interrupted my verdicts to make this claim. You will be severely penalized if I find you a bluff. Uh, uh, th that's fine, Your Honor. This shows that it's possible the sword Miss Wright used was not the cause of death. Uh, uh sword stand. The stand? The stand. It contains a rubber sword. Boop. Take that! What's this? A sword from the show? That's right, Your Honor. This rubber sword was in the sword stand under stage. During the trick, Miss Wright was supposed to swap the real sword for the rubber sword. And she told us on record that she f remembers very clearly that she did. I see. So the sword the defendant thrust into the coffin was a rubber sword, was it? Well, then why was a steel sword found by the stage? Somebody must have put the steel sword there by swapping it with the rubber one. Just after the incident occurred, the dragon set piece fell, and the theater was evacuated. The real culprit must have used the resulting chaos to swap the rubber sword for the steel one. Objection. Do you not know when to give up, Stinkbug? That is not possible. Blood was found in the coffin hole that the sword was thrust into. It must have been left there when the accused withdrew the sword. This is incontrovertible, I can't read. Incontrovertible. Re incontrovertible proof, I can words, that the sword she used was a steel one. None of the stab came before. Mm. Yeah. Um, but the, but that blood could have been the result of someone tampering with the crime scene after the fact. That's true. After the set piece fell and the audience was cleared out of the out of the theater, there was plenty of time for somebody to plant that blood there. Objection. If the sword of the accused used was a rubber one, then when exactly do you propose the victim was killed? Given that Mr. Rios was alive when he entered that coffin. Objection. Finding the answer to that question is precisely why we need to continue this trial. I don't know. I said some pretty harsh words. I don't want to. I don't want to look like a fool. <laughs> Let me express my opinion. By all accounts, it is a, it is certainly reasonable to suspect the defendant based uh, suspect the defendant based on the evidence. But as to the question of whether the sword the defendant used was rubber or steel, I believe further discussion is warranted. I suggest we hear from the defendant herself on this issue. Very well, Your Honor. Yes, I saved it somehow. Too close for comfort, but still. The crime photo has been updated with trace bloods in the coffin holes. Plural holes? In one of the coffin holes. Let us adjourn for a brief 15 minute recess. I advise the prosecution and the defense to use this time to prepare. Prepare your buttholes. Prepa prepare your, your own holes <laughs> to be maybe bloodied or not. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really know. I don't really know where this analogy is going, so I'm just going to hit my gavel now. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to stop while I'm ahead. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just going to slam my gavel. <laughs> oh, that was hairy. Tell me about it. We barely made it through by the skin of my teeth. I can't say I'm crazy about that prosecutor said Marty either. You know, with the way he says, let it go and move on, as if it was some kind of Disney <laughs> catchphrase. Let it go and move on, huh? Oh, is this the, uh, is this, what's his face, Regents? Uh, Roger? I think yeah. so. Whoa, boys. Whoa, boy. <laughs> Am I interrupting a secret conclave of villains or something? Yeah, it's yeah. it. Yeah. I kind of want to give him, like, a more of a, um, less of an RDJ voice and more of, like, a... 
a Prince Abubu. <laughs> like the uh, Jafar. Oh, uh, Jafar. He's got the. He's got the I've got your next evil scheme in the. Uh, got your next evil scheme in the works already. Because he's also known as like the ratings Raja. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, I guess so. What do you want? <laughs> Keep making that face, champ, and everybody's going to change the channel. Look this way, Trucy. Now smile. Smile for the camera. Let's see those pearly whites. Isn't that what the Grammary Creed tells you to do? Wow, that's really fucking creepy. <laughs> How does it feel, Trucy? Everybody online can't stop talking about you. They're calling you a real witch out there. Could this be the end of the troop Grammary? <laughs> Way you carry Thank you, Athena. Oh my god. I swear to god, I will punch that camera. Yeah. Oh, what's this? Something just charged into the fray. It looks like a yellow gorilla or something. Could it be Trucy's pet? Filling is prohibited inside the courthouse. Do you want me to get the bailiff? <laughs> uh huh? Filming? What are you talking about? I don't even have a camera on me. <sighs> What happened to the camera? Ooh, he's a tricker. He's a magician too. Yeah, it seems. sleight of hand. It just disappeared right before our very eyes. <laughs> I'll be enjoying the rest of the Trucy show from the gallery. He put it in his prison put, purse. He put it in his <laughs> prison purse. Yeah. I'll put out a call for Trucy's fans to come uh. and support her earlier. By the way. Bet I'll get some great footage out, out of them. This has got to be going to be good. Hang loose, baby. He called in some of Trucy's fans, but for what purpose? Not the, maybe not the fans, but like some hecklers. Mm, yeah. Apollo? That thing Mr. Retinus just did. That was some high level sleight of hand. Huh? Why would he know how to do something like that? I don't know, but he definitely has some serious magic skills. No way! But I thought he said magicians were all a bunch of good-for-nothings. Uh, who's this person? Mr. Ratings Raja oh, is... No, fine, fine. Okay, here's my here's my thing. Ratings Raja is Mr. Rius. Yeah, he just put someone in uh, ahead of him Yeah. To, to, to do it. And then killed the guy so that he wouldn't have to... He wouldn't have to, um... What's the word I'm looking for? He would basically so that he could hide his death and then basically rebrand and uh -huh. steal the the notebook. the grammar. Yes. So this is just an all elaborate ploy for him to get back in the game and get back at the grammaries, but like oh. way more convoluted than just a prank, right? Yes. Do you want a slice? Huh? Sure. Yeah. Nailed it. Yeah, because at the same time, you look at the new the, the new Mysterious, and he hasn't aged a bit. And it's been like, what, 15 years? Yeah, so, like, if you think about it, it feels very sus. Okay, I see. No more. No yeah. more. No more sausage. Oh. I'm pretty sure we went through, like, half that sausage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually went through half that sausage, baby. Oh, hello, Bonnie. Can I help you with something? Um, well, there's something that's been bothering me. Really? What is it? Well, you see... Hey, dummy, what are you whispering to that lobster boy about? Oh, no. Do I have a new fan? Hmm? <laughs> Do I have a new fangirl? Oh! <laughs> well, well, Paul, Justice, I just think you're really cool, and I think I... <laughs> I would really like to be able to work together with you and... Yeah. <laughs> Betty? Who the thick, Who the heck do you think you are? Are you crazy? You want a piece of this? You know you have to talk to me first before you do or say anything, you harebrain! <laughs> harebrain. But also, wow, really controlling. <laughs> yeah, but, but I... Shut your mouth, dumb bunny! Come with me now! Oh. I just wanted to tell Miss Polaroid just to sit in my gym. I wonder what was bothering her. He has a nice piece of ass. <laughs> he looks tight like a tiger. <laughs> There's nowhere we're going to find out what with Betty constantly hovering over her like that. God is about to reconvene. Well, you'll be all right testifying? <laughs> yes, it's just... 
I wonder what Mr. Rittenus has up his sleeve. I doubt he's bringing in actual fans. Yeah, probably not. I wonder what he has up his sleeve, too. He'd better not be trying to get under Trucy's skin right now, of all times. Hmm. You're Trucy right, and you'll be fine! Oh! There goes Apollo with his best trick! That's right. Whenever I'm feeling down, I always tell myself I'm fine. All right, I'll give it a try. I'm Trucy right, and I am fine! <laughs> Thanks, Polly. I think I can do this now. That a girl. Good luck up there on the stand. You'll do great. Thanks. I'll be fine. I can do this. All right, Justice. You can do this too. Time to focus on the rest of the trial. He just smiles at the trauma. <laughs> That's what we love. That is do your best. entire life, Apollo. He's he's unfortunately skilled with that. Is this the end of the? Oh, this is the end, isn't it? Can we? Can we finish this in a half hour? Uh, Wait. you have two, three statements to get through, and whatever the fuck goes between those statements. Hmm. So you could. I don't know. It's pretty late, but. Uh... Do we want to end this now? I think uh, we're gonna go ahead and end this now. We're gonna end a little early. I know, I know we we have uh, postponed it for this long, but um, yeah, we're gonna end it today right here, halfway through this uh, court trial, and we'll come back again to it on Sunday or maybe sooner, depending on how things pan out. But uh, yeah, keep an eye open if we decide to stream outside of our usual days, which you can see up here. Um, <laughs> great. Great timing. Uh, we can, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let you know through Twitter and through Discord. That being said, follow us on Twitter, Discord, Instagram, and all that good stuff where we make most of our announcements um, uh, to kind of keep in the loop of what we'll be doing over the week. Um, the bot knew, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he sent us the pause. Uh, no, the, so yeah, tomorrow is going to be Tuesday. Joyce will be back with Persona 4 Golden. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, I think James will be absent because he is needing to help Ash and everybody, Ash and himself, get ready for their trip uh, next weekend to Otacon. Um, they'll be tabling there. So you might expect- Is it Otacon? I think it might be Otacon. Somewhere in Montreal. Or Otakuthon? Or Otakuthon, yeah, in Montreal. Uh, and then Thursday is uh, Colson's day in the morning with more hack uh, hack infection. Friday's our free day, and then Saturday is a multiplayer stream. Probably might not happen this week, considering um, James is going to be gone. Um, but we're going to talk to Colston and see if he wants to play any multiplayer games together, and we'll, we'll see how that pans out. And then Sunday, we're back again with some race attorneys. Um, if you're new here, uh, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, you want to see more of this uh, in our archives, you can go to YouTube and look up our YouTube channel, uh, Daring Player Squad. Uh, Daring Players, plural, squad. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, just, just check out all those streams as well. Um, until then, uh, you know, stay happy, stay healthy. Keep cool if you're here on the West Coast having a ridiculous time dealing with the heat. Uh, I hope you all the best. And uh, hopefully we will have some nice cool rain for tomorrow, I think it's due. Uh, anyway, my name's Rashi. I'm Joyce. This is the Daring Player Squad channel. Ace Attorney, Spirit of Justice, Bad Voice Dubs. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Look at that big.